You mentioned ketchup and mustard, Brian Sazi. Tell us more. Oh, you know I did that on purpose, Julie Hyman. That was I a do. setup for the interview. Uh, I, I see. You know what? We've been working together for a long time, <laughs> uh, and you just know each other. But to that end, I caught up with Kraft Heinz CEO Miguel Patricio ahead of the Berkshire meeting to get a sense on his turnaround and why is all this important. Uh, it is because Berkshire Hathaway still owns about 28 percent of Kraft Heinz, has three board members on that Kraft Heinz board, notably uh, likely Buffett successor and Greg Abel. So I talked to Patricio about the company's turnaround and if there is, in fact, a turnaround brewing. Four years ago, um, we were a depressed company. And then when I was starting working on the strategy, came the pandemic. And I thought, Brian, that you know, transforming the company through teams would be impossible, but it was not. And uh, at that time, we were you know, um, downgraded to junk or to high yield. Uh, we had a big debt. Um, we were able to pay $10 billion of debt, and two years later, we were in investment grade again. Um, and, and with that, we, we created momentum, um, and we start transforming the company in all parts of the company, from sales to finance, from marketing to supply. And, and this has been a journey. I mean, we are in a very different place today and, and, and very engaged and very energized and very optimistic about the future. Well, you just came off your uh, earnings, and I think your earnings, Miguel, really surprised a lot of people on Wall Street. And my question to you is this. Do you think investors are missing a turnaround story at a story brand like Kraft Heinz? I mean, I think that uh, we have to earn it. And, and um, you know, reputation you build with time. It is not from a day to another. But the truth is that we've been beating estimation, uh, you know, beating the, the market for, for um, 12 or 13 quarters in a row. So... You know, we've been proving that we know what we're doing. I mean, this quarter we grew 9.4% in net sales, uh, 12 or 11.9% uh, in EBITDA. We grew 13.3% in adjusted EPS. Uh, we grew margin. And, and parts of the business that we, like emerging markets and food service, that we, that we told the market that would be representing two thirds of our growth, really, but really, uh, uh, ex excelled expectations of the market. I mean, uh, emerging markets, we grew by 23% and, and uh, food service, we grew by 29%. So it was a very good, very, very good um, quarter. One thing I think you've done uh, really well with inside Kraft Heinz, Miguel, is driving more focus in the organization. Now, there is no secret that investment dollars were starved under prior management. You came in giving more of your top brands, more investment, more room to grow. Where are you at with some of those power brands and reinventing them? So this was one of the things that we did. I think that four years ago, we were apologetic about our brands and we thought that the future would be smaller brands and, you know, and very niche brands. And we were launching a lot of different brands in the market. We did just the opposite. You know, we, we focused on, on our core. We have incredible brands. We have six billion dollar brands, you know, Heinz, Lunchables, Kraft, um, you know, Kraft Mac and Cheese, Lunchables. It, it's just incredible brands. And, and what we did was uh, reinvigorate these brands. First, we renovated the brands, packaging, formulation, communication, and, um, and, and, and also overseas. I mean, we put uh, uh, our investments in emerging markets and, and also in food service and, and the strategy has been working. I mean, we've been better every quarter since, since 2019. <laughs> well, and now, what is next for two brands in particular? I'm very focused on, on the uh, core mac and cheese business and then a brand like Lunchables. What's next for those two brands? Uh, now, specifically on brands like mac and cheese and, and Lunchables, let, let me tell you Kraft mac and cheese. One of the things that we have very different from the rest of the market is that we play in stable table products like ketchup, um, Heinz ketchup. We play in refrigerated products um, like Singles or Philadelphia cream cheese. And we, are, we also play in frozen food, like we are uh, leaders in frozen potatoes like with Oraeda. There's no other company that plays in these three different states of temperature. And, 
and, and our brands have never really navigated through the, st the three ones. And there's a big opportunity. So like Kraft Mac and Cheese, we are about to launch frozen Kraft Mac and Cheese. Makes all frozen? Frozen? Yeah, Mac and Cheese Frozen is a market of close to $800 million. We never played there. And we never played because we were organized, you know, the frozen team and, and the refrigerated team. Um, and, and, and as a consequence, we, you know, each one was playing a different part. Uh, we are today much more integrated as a company, working together in a much better place, which gives us chances uh, to do what I just mentioned. It's obvious. We just had not done it yet. Lunchables. Um, you recently saw us launching Lunchables now in schools. Um, food service is a huge market. Schools is an untapped market for us. And, and we, although our Lunchables business is based on kids, is $1.2 billion brand, but um, that, that moms give to kids to go, you know, to school. Um, but we never sold in school, in schools. And, and, and to sell in schools, we had to adapt to make Lunchables more nutritious. And that's what we just did. So it's, we are going to have a much bigger uh, reach, a much bigger distribution of Lunchables. And I could talk to you about innovation that we are preparing for Lunchables as well, but that would take a while. <laughs> I'm sure it will. So what I'm hearing from you is a reinvention of some of these story brands, Miguel. Uh, I believe now you're on track to save two and a half billion dollars in, in cost by, by 2027. Lots of good things going on at the company. You know, and as I think about you know, right now, I'm in Omaha getting ready for Warren Buffett's annual meeting. Of course, he is a, remains a very significant shareholder in your company. You know, he has been critical of Kraft Heinz uh, the past few years, but I'm hearing a turnaround story. You know, what has your interaction been with a Greg Abel, who might be the successor to Warren Buffett and who's on your board? What has he had to tell you lately? Yeah, so Greg is, is one of our most important uh, uh, board members. Um, uh, Berkshire has about close to 28% of our company, of the shares of Kraft Heinz. Um, they have three chairs in the board. Um, and the good thing is that we get along very well. I mean, um, some of the values of, uh, of Berkshire are exactly the same as, as some of our values. They, they are very simple people, very straightforward no egos as, as, as we are and as I like my people to be. All right, there you have uh, Kraft Heinz CEO Miguel Patricio, Julie Hyman talking about the innovative product coming up and that is frozen mac and cheese. Having said all that, as you can see, and I didn't oversell this despite the uh, overture uh, by my producer off camera, Kevin. You can see the crowds coming, really coming in here. A lot of folks that uh, we have started to talk to are from Brazil, China, England lining up to get that real uh, insider access to Warren Buffett tomorrow. But as for today, they're going to get in there around noon, walk around all things uh, Warren Buffett Palooza. That is uh, whether it's Borsheim's exhibitions or his Seas Candies, Dairy Queen, Dilly Bars, you name it. That is everything they're lining up to see and just get a taste of all things Warren Buffett. Unfortunately, guys, no frozen mac and cheese from Kraft Heinz. Maybe there is, but I'm betting there won't be. I, I hope that you microwave it before you, before you you eat it. <laughs> Just a little bit. Heat, heat it up. No, it sounds, sounds no, like you got, you got a week and a healthy eating ahead of you, Saz. <laughs> Enjoy it.